everyone. Welcome to Ask Ron. The topic today is contest prep for natties. I don't like that word natties, but it's uh, the word everyone uses for drug-free bodybuilders now, so I got to get with the times and use it. Probably saying, Harris, what do you know about drug-free bodybuilding here? You've talked about uh, being a juice head many times with the anabolic doc, Dr. Thomas O'Connor. Well, I actually trained drug-free from age 14 to 27. That's 13 years. I, even I can do that math. I competed drug-free uh, in many shows from 1989 to, to 1995. And then uh, I was drug-free for life at that point, competing in organizations like the ANBC, which was drug-free for life, meaning you had to take a polygraph. And I know polygraphs. I know you guys can argue all day. And you, the comments you guys are going to say polygraphs are, are nothing. They don't mean anything. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about, you guys can debate all day long, like what constitutes a natural bodybuilder. These are all mm, topics for other discussions. I'm talking about contest prep, contest prep in this. So let's stay on topic, guys. So I competed in that, the ANBC, the ABCC. Uh, in 1994, the NPC began, or was it 93? They began having tested shows. And I competed in a bunch of Ironman Naturally shows uh, later. Later on, I would go off for periods of over a year, or a, a minimum of a year, I should say, at least, to be qualified, uh, eligible, I should say, for NPC tested events. I won an overall in one of those in 2007 up in New Hampshire. Did the Team Universe in 2009, uh, being a year drug-free. Did it again in 2011, being drug-free for a year. Uh, and since then, I've only done a couple, I did a couple shows in 13 that, that were not tested, so I was not natural. But I do know all about contest prep as a natural bodybuilder because I was one and I did prep for shows and I did learn, uh, I did learn from mistakes. I made many mistakes. I had no coach. I never had a coach throughout all the years of competing. So what would I would do, what I would do is just try a lot of things and uh, make mistakes and learn from them. Sometimes I had to make the same mistake a couple, three times before I finally learned. So the biggest, uh, the biggest thing I learned from uh, a major mistake I kept making was, don't get fat. That's the worst thing you can do as a natural bodybuilder, a competitive natural bodybuilder. Uh, you probably noticed at, at bodybuilding shows, natural bodybuilding shows, uh, and you guys are gonna say there's no such thing as natural bodybuilding shows, but let's say there are, okay? You've probably seen that there are some guys who have a good amount of size, but they're in no kind of condition. They're, they're just, they're fat still. They didn't get in shape. Then you'll see shredded guys that are tiny. Like in clothes, they walk past you. You, didn't, you don't even think they lift weights. Uh, on stage, they usually look pretty good because being shredded with all the muscle striations and splits and everything, it's an illusion. It's like a fine cut diamond. It catches, the, the details catch all the light and, and gives the illusion of more size. But you'll notice you don't see very uh, very often is a big ripped natural bodybuilder. It's almost an impossible thing because <sighs> dieting is very catabolic, very catabolic. There have been actual research studies following along doing blood work with drug-free bodybuilders as they dieted down for competition and their testosterone levels went down to the gutter and they lost some muscle mass along with the fat. You're always going to lose some muscle mass along with the with the fat as you get in shape as a natural bodybuilder. The key is to try to minimize it. So you want to lose maybe two pounds of muscle, not 20 or 30 pounds of muscle, which can happen, trust me. And uh, the worst the worst thing you can do as a bodybuilder, a natural bodybuilder, is to get fat because every pound of muscle, every pound of fat that you gain has to come off sooner or later. Taking it off is a lot harder than it was to put on. And you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be very careful to try to preserve your muscle mass. Steroids, it's not so much that they're so valuable to to gain muscle mass. So don't get me wrong, you can absolutely gain a lot more muscle mass with steroids than you can without. But they really come in handy when you diet. And if you've if you've only dieted on steroids, you don't know this. But if you've dieted drug free, you know that it's it's impossible to hold on to all your muscle mass. And you're going to lose proportionally more muscle mass the more extreme your prep is. So the faster you try to lose the muscle, the, the, the fat, the, if you only give yourself six or eight weeks and you're doing two hours of cardio a day, three hours of cardio a day, you're going zero carbs, you're going to lose a lot of muscle tissue, okay? So if you did a, uh, some body fat test and it showed you had 180 pounds of lean tissue, you know, if you're on steroids, you're going to compete close to 180 
you're still going to keep those 180 pounds of lean tissue for the most part. Natural guys, mm, you might you might be competing at like 160. You might lose 20 pounds of muscle. Uh, you want to minimize that, and the way to do that is stay in shape. Don't ever get fat, ever. I got fat, okay? Uh, my thing was, I was a small, skinny kid, so I was I was all about the weight. I was like, I can't wait to weigh, to weigh 180 pounds someday. I got to 180. I was like, yes, can't wait to weigh 200. Yes, I'm 200. Then it was 220. Then it was 230. So uh, by my by the about age 22, my off season weight was 22, 23. I was getting up to 230. Okay, it was not it was not a pretty 230. Uh, my face looked like a pumpkin. I had jelly rolls I could grab around my my belly, my lower back. My butt had dimples on it. I was just carrying a lot of body fat, but I'd stepped on the scale and saw 230. I was like, yes, I'm huge. Didn't know. I was, I was a kid. I was a dumbass kid. And again, I had no guidance. I had no coach, no one to tell me I was too fat, no one to tell me what to do. So I just kept effing up. And that's the biggest thing I did for years wrong was getting fat, getting too much body fat. Then I would give myself eight weeks to get in shape. Now, granted, my metabolism was faster back then in my 20s, for sure, than it is now that I just turned 50 yesterday. Um, but still, that's not enough time. Eight weeks to try to lose 230. And see, the thing is, when you get fat, you have a false, you have a delusion, a delusional idea, a false sense of how much muscle you actually have. So I'd look in the mirror, I'd see all this mass, and most of it was fat. But I saw, okay, look at those shoulders, look at that chest, look at that back. And a lot of it was just fat. I thought it was muscle. So I would go down from 230 to about 180 in the space of eight weeks. To do that, I was doing double sessions of cardio a day, 45 minutes, running my ass off on the elliptical trainer, uh, fasted, and then I would do another 45 after weights. Sometimes I'd be really psychotic and come back at night and do another 40 minutes. So I was doing a lot of cardio. Uh, I was dieting. I wasn't going too low. I never went zero carbs ever. Just didn't never never felt right to me. I just couldn't hack it honestly, and I didn't need it. I didn't need to do it. I've never found through all the years that I was I, I had to go zero carbs at any point. So uh, I would diet too fast, not give myself enough time, and I'd end up. You know, the first few times I did it, I didn't even get in shape. I'd be 180, and I still probably had another good 10 or 15 pounds of fat to go. But I was like, that's it. I'm not. Well, by then it was time to compete, so it was either back out of the show or get on stage like that. And I would. I never backed out of a show in my life ever. If I said I was doing a show, I would sign up for it, you know, a couple months in advance, and that's it. I was in the show, regardless. You know, maybe if I had torn a pack or a quad or something, I would have backed out, but it, I never had injuries like that when I was competing. So I learned over several years, many years, it took me to figure out just stay leaner, stay leaner. How lean? I'm not going to give you a body weight, say 10 to 15 pounds. Uh, within contest weight because that's different if you're a 140 pound guy versus if you're a 220 pound guy you know 10 pounds is, is very different for those two people so this is what i advise always be able to see your abs always they don't have to be a clear six pack you could stick your fingers in between you could wash your clothes on washboard abs but you do have to see some abs you have to see some muscle separation you should be able to see the quads the different quads not just one big lump your back should have some separation between the, the various muscle groups. Shouldn't be a big, you shouldn't look like a big lump of marshmallow, okay? You should be able to see some muscle separations. Um, that's all. You don't need to be shredded. I don't recommend that unless you're one of those rare creatures who stays shredded naturally. If so, you don't need to watch this because contest prep just means showing up at the contest. You probably don't even have to diet. There are some very, very rare cases like that. Very rare, thankfully, because... We hate them. But I did learn, I did learn drastic measures as a natural bodybuilder will eat up your muscle mass. Because like I said, you don't have the steroids to preserve the muscle tissue. You are going to lose some. You want to minimize that by staying lean and dieting gradually. You don't want to do a ton of cardio. You don't want to do two hours of cardio. You probably don't want to do a lot of real extreme, uh, very demanding cardio like the step mill. Uh, I used to use the pre-core elliptical. That was my go-to for cardio. I love that thing. I could run my ass off. I used to do intervals, H-I-I-T. I would sprint for 90 to 120 seconds at about somewhere around 300 RPM uh, until I couldn't breathe. Then I would back it off for about two minutes at like uh, somewhere around 150. 
and then bam, as soon as I was ready, I would go again over and over until the 40 minutes or whatever was complete. Um, that worked real well for me. You know, you don't want to do anything that your legs are getting all pumped. Uh, if your legs are constantly sore, you probably need to find a different type of cardio. You know, I don't believe there's any one machine that's the best cardio machine. Step mill is very, very difficult. Absolutely. Burns fat. But it's not the only thing. Anything where you're, you're, your breathing is up and you're getting a sweat going, you're burning calories. Uh, if it's like hard, if it's hard to follow a conversation, the talk test, as those of you who uh, had to take any kind of personal training certification probably heard it referred to as the talk test. You shouldn't really be able to comfortably maintain a conversation with anybody while you're doing cardio. If you are, your cardio is pretty wimpy. That's like that, the cardio like the old ladies walk around the mall on Saturday mornings, okay? It's not doing a whole lot for you. Look at them. So, like I said, don't want to do too much cardio. I'd say most for most drug-free bodybuilders, you want to cap it off at 40 to 45 minutes a day. I don't think you should be doing double sessions. Uh, and if you've stayed in decent shape and you're taking a good 16 weeks to diet, you don't need to do that. Okay. Fasting cardio will burn a little bit more fat, I found, and most people have found the same thing. But you can still burn almost as much by doing it after your weight training. I say this because not everyone can get to the gym twice a day. Not everybody has a cardio, a piece of cardio equipment in their home. Some of you do. That's awesome. Um, as far as the diet, diets are diets. We all eat the same stuff, guys. You probably will have to take your carbs down just like a guy on drugs does. Uh, like I said, because you don't have the steroids acting to preserve the muscle mass, giving you that nice anti-catabolic effect, keeping you from going into that horrible, horrible catabolic state, you want to... Keep a good amount of calories in. I'm not going to say it. Anybody that tells you eat this amount of calories uh, and they're just using it as a blanket statement, just run the other way when you hear that because they're full of shit. I, need more, I might need more calories than you. I, mean, I might need less calories. You know, you don't know. That's why we keep food logs and we keep an eye on your body composition and your weight to see how it's affecting you so you can adjust up or down accordingly. But generally speaking, as a natural bodybuilder, you don't want to starve. You don't want to go down to like 1,000 calories a day as a man. You don't want to go zero carbs, most people. I found personally that keto diets, they work very well for people with slower metabolisms, people that were obese for most of their life. Uh, me, I never, ever had to go zero carbs. I never even had to go very low carbs. For me, low carbs was like 200 grams a day, which isn't really that low. Um, maybe some days when I wasn't training, if I was behind in my prep and I felt I, I needed to catch up, I would go down like 100 grams a day, but I never went zero. But those are the keys, guys. If you're a natural bodybuilder, if you want to compete and you want to keep most of your muscle mass and get in shape, you want to stay fairly lean all the time. You never want to get fat. Never want to get 40, 50 pounds out of shape above your contest weight because it's all going to have to come off and it's going to be a lot harder to take off. A lot harder and you're going to lose a lot of muscle along with it. You don't want that. You want to diet gradually. 16 weeks is, is perfect for most people, especially if you're in decent shape to start with. Then you don't ever have to do anything extreme. You don't have to do a ton of cardio. You don't have to do zero carbs. You can cruise in. Just take it off nice and gradually. Show up on contest day with as much muscle as you possibly can. Um, and I want to end this by saying uh, I have nothing but respect for you guys who do it naturally. I did it myself for many years. I know how hard it is. And I know it's not easy because you don't get the same rewards. You don't get to carry that freaky muscle mass along with the cuts like the enhanced guys do. You know, it, it's, it's a different ball game. It's totally different. And you also have people who, if you look good, they're going to say you're not natural anyway. And then you also have to deal with fake natties, cheaters competing in your shows. Sometimes they don't get caught. You know, it, it's, it's, it's tough. I know it's tough, guys. You know, so I applaud you guys. Seriously. I give it up to you guys who do it drug-free. Nothing but respect. Been there, done that. You know, I've done it both ways. I've done it on drugs. I've done it without drugs. So I have a perspective that a lot of these guys uh, do not. Some of these people giving out contest prep advice, all they know is drugs. They've never done it drug-free. They, they don't know how to do it drug-free. They don't know how to tell other people to do it drug-free because they rely on the drugs to do things like lose the fat. You know, you guys don't have the clen, the thyroid meds, the... DNP, which I don't think anybody should be using. I'm not even going to argue about that. I know you, some of you guys are like, DNP's the shit, man. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, you don't have all those things on your side. You have to rely a lot more on just hard work, discipline, uh, and that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching. 
encourage you to follow me at at Ron Harris Muscle on Instagram, at Ron Harris Muscle. That's where you can uh, find all my selfies and all that good stuff. And of course, head over to musculardevelopment.com to our noble forum. We got some great discussions going on all the time, all kinds of topics. For those of you who love the sport, we also have in the website training sections, drug sections, nutrition sections, anything you want. It's in there somewhere, guys. Trust me. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.